What is good, comic fam? Thanks for joining me today. Big congrats to World Builders Toolkit. You won the giveaway from last week. And we're chatting the trending comics in the comic market. And we're gonna start off this list at number 10 with an Overstreet Price Guide advisor. You know his name is Russ Bright. What's going on, comic book fam? Number 10 on the list is a hot one. Star Wars High Republic number two, the one in 25 Ashley Witter variant. Now we knew that this was gonna be hot because these were pre-selling $200 for a 9.8 but they are going $65 solidly and $100 for a high raw sale. Now, why all of this interest? Well, we know it's Star Wars, but keep in mind that there was only one cover for number two and one variant, the one in 25. Compare this to number one, where we had three different covers and a one in 10 and a one in 25 variant. The collectors and the completionists are definitely pushing this up. And for those of you that are completionists, keep in mind that this coming Monday is final order cutoff for second print on number two. And you know what happened to the second prints of number one. They sold out immediately. All right, and now we're chatting number nine on this list. We have Amazing Spider-Man 257. Now, this is the second appearance of Puma, and that's what you're going to find largely taking place throughout this comic book, a fight between our black suit-wearing Spider-Man against the Puma. But at the very end, we see a new individual don the costume of Hobgoblin, making this the first appearance of Ned Leeds as the Hobgoblin, hitting $20 average sales and a high sale for a CGC 9.8 hitting $190. Well, late 2020, the actor who plays Ned Leeds, Jacob Batalon, he surprised the world looking so slim. The dude was working out. He lost a considerable amount of weight, leading many to suspect that the inspiration behind this could be a character transition in the film franchise of Spider-Man. Could we be seeing Ned Leeds take on the role as Hobgoblin like he does in the comics in this very issue? Well, this past week, Sony posted a picture of Jacob Batalon, Ned Leeds, with a, it was a cartoon-looking hood on top of his character. I think this right here is signs that this character is going to see some transformation more than he already has, and it's more reason to why we're seeing an increase in copies sold of 131% of this comic in the last seven days. Number eight on the list, we have Sandman number four, which is the first appearance of Lucifer Morningstar. This book is going solidly for $100 average sale and $175 for a CGC 9.6. The announcement this week that Gwendolyn Christie, who played Brienne of Tarth from Game of Thrones, is going to be playing Lucifer Morningstar. We have to keep in mind that Lucifer has always been described as the most beautiful of all of the angels. So there's no gender involved. I, for one, believe that Brienne of Tarth from Game of Thrones is really going to be an amazing addition to this show. We also have an amazingly long list of other great Game of Thrones actors who are going to be in this Sandman series. This book's tough and high grade. 9.8s back in November were hitting $350, and we're seeing an increase in copies sold in seven days for this book at 533%. And we could have put Sandman 1 here, the first issue of the Neil Gaiman run at number 8, instead of number 4, because they sold about the same rate week over week. But I thought it more interesting that this villain, that this antagonist in this run is causing this much stir. And I think it's because of the gender swap and I'm all for it. Now, let's take a look at number seven on the list. We have Batman issue 96. And we're talking about the Jimenez 1 in 25 variant. We have Clown Hunter making its way onto our trending video today. $50 average sales, $125 for a CGC 9.8 and an increase in copies sold of 150% in the last week. And this is all ties to the future state. And this book is currently going for more money than the punchline variant, Russ. And it's all because of Red X speculation. So Tom, this is one of those spec things that none of us really saw coming, but all of us probably should have seen coming anyway. When they announced that Clown Hunter was gonna be a new character, this variant did spike. And there were a lot of people talking about who could Clown Hunter be? Well, if this actually does get tied into him being Red X, I believe this book has a lot more movement upwards. 
Well, Clown Hunter came on the scene so quick, but got enough character development to really make it known that he was going to be on to larger things within the DC universe, especially considering that he was so focused on killing anyone associated with the Joker that when he went up against Harley Quinn and had the opportunity to, Bruce Wayne talked him down. The Dark Knight was able to reason with him, showing that he could be molded. Is this a character that's been molded in the future state? I mean, the moniker, the X looks very similar to the clown hunter wear that he was debuted in. This means that he could be this character in the future state, giving more reason to spec on his character design variant, the Jimenez 1 in 25. Nine more days, folks, for you to sign up for the Mystery Mail Call and get this great Luke Cage Marvel Legacy Voices number one cover done by Ken Lashley. Nine days left. Link in the description. Support what we do. And let's chat some Baron Zemo. Number six on the list, we have Captain America number 275. And I love this cover, but you know what I love even more, Tom? The first panel. This is so great because you see Captain America coming out of like a yellow wall. It feels so John Tyler Christopher. It's like an early banana variant prototype. Prototype. <laughs> <laughs> Whether or not John Tyler Christopher had this in mind when he did his new covers, this is the first appearance of the second Baron Zemo in costume. And we're seeing $20 average sales, high sales of $260 bucks for a CGC 9.8. And we've been chatting about this book, Russ, since literally 2019. Yes, we have, Tom, because we've been talking about the Winter Soldier and Falcon show. We were talking about his original costume. Well, now we have leaks of toys that are showing Baron Zemo in this costume. That's right, which caused this book to spike up even more now than it did way back then. We're talking a 520% increase in copies sold week over week. And I think they just had to see it. They had to see a 3D model of what we're going to get. This amazing cinematography level show that's slated immediately after WandaVision. And another book we've been talking about since 2019, May of 2019 to be exact, number five on the list, we have War of the Realms, New Agents of Atlas, number one. This book is selling solidly for $20 average sale with a high sale of $115 for CGC 9.8. The first appearance of the new Agents of Atlas in this comic book has seemed so promising for such a long time for good reason. Because back in 2019, Marvel announced a collaboration with NetEase to create video games, television shows, movies, and comics and beyond that. More things for the Chinese market. And that led many to believe that it was this superhero team that they were going to be utilizing with those intentions. And after this week's questioning by Kevin Feige, we're finding out that the intentions are still on pace. And we're going to be seeing some interesting things happen in the Asian Marvel market. Kevin Feige was straight up asked, isn't it high time we get a Southeast Asian Marvel superhero on Disney Plus? Feige responded with, I think it is. And I think you won't have to wait there very long at all. We've announced a number of shows and we've got more in the works. As I've said, the world outside your window, no matter where you are, is what the Marvel world will represent. They're covering all their bases and new agents of Atlas has been on spec radar for quite some time, only given reason to an increase in copies sold of 163% after Kevin Feige dished more info. Number four on the list, we have Batman number 442. This is the first time we see Tim Drake in the new Robin costume. These are going solidly for $10 and $100 for a CGC 9.8. Now, this does come from the era of overproduced books in the 90s, but it's such a classic book. It has always been popular, and we know that Tim Drake is going to have a new actor showing up in the Titans series. And if you didn't catch up on the DC streaming, Titans has just moved over to HBO Max. You're going to have an opportunity to catch up on watching that before they introduce Tim Drake. An increase of copies sold of 286%, and it's clearly because of the show. This is a common book, but one that's a minor key and will always be a minor key because it's a major moment for the boy wonder. And after this week's news broken by variety we're finding out that we are actually going to see our first person of color take on the boy wonder in a live action adaptation and his new name is jay lacurgo 
This character is going to be playing the third Robin, and we know that Jason Todd is slated for a costume update this season. We saw him in the Red Hood gear, so clearly someone else has to take on the role of Robin, and we have that new actor. So if you were paying attention to your key collector key alerts, you would know that this next book on the list with a super low print count is massively in demand right now. Use that code TOM101, comic fam. This is the best comic app that is available for you to download on Android or iPhones, and it's going to keep track of your collection. It's going to give you approximate value of your comic books, and it'll keep you up to date on the rapidly moving market. We're in a 24-7 news cycle, comic fam. It moves quick. Just like Electric Black moved quick this very week at number three, courtesy of Scout Comics, we have Electric Black number one hitting $20 average sales and $70 for a CGC 9.8. And Russ, you were right. There was only 5,776 copies of this comic book ordered by retailers. Tom, this book had a very little amount of buzz, but the people who like horror were really all over this book. The fact that we know that this is getting turned into the first American animated horror series. Come on, did these guys not see Scooby-Doo or the Tales from the Crypt show? But yes, I'm excited for this. This horror anthology with a taste of Tales from the Crypt that follows Electric Black, a pawn shop with various items that all tell a story. I mean, all it took was option news to take place to move the needle. We have an increase in copies sold of 2,667% this week. Now, there is a cover B to this comic book, but the one that I really like is the EC homage cover done by Joseph Schmalky. There's only 600 copies of those out there. And now at the list at number two, we got some Black Panther spec happening, but it's not because of Shuddy. It's not even because of M'Baku, No. We have Ryan Coogler to discuss. We have Black Panther World of Wakanda issue number one hitting $18 average sales and a high sale that was set back in November of $40 for a CGC 9.8. No one was specking on this book. No one was getting this book graded, but I suspect they are now because Ryan Coogler, the man behind Black Panther, has just caused this book to spike 2,800% increase in copies sold in just seven days. So we all know that Ryan Coogler was the director of Black Panther, but he was also the co-writer. Disney just signed him to a five-year deal, and the news that we have is that he's going to be creating a drama based in the world of Wakanda. The Kingdom of Wakanda on Disney+. Plus. And Deadline made sure to mention that this wasn't the only thing his production company was going to be attached to over the next half a decade. This director is on to some big things, and we have some more Black Panther goodness coming. This Eisner-winning comic is excellent, based back in 2018, focusing on the lives of women in Wakanda, and I think it's an excellent choice for not just speculation, but for an amazing narrative to take place on Disney+. Plus. Hey, comic fam, if you like what you hear and see, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. Tom and I have been doing weekly reports since 2018. We are coming up on our third year anniversary of doing this every single week to bring the best and hottest information about the trending comics to you, the comic book fam. It's pretty cool crazy, Russ. I mean, we've been doing this for three years straight and we aren't stopping anytime soon. So hit that like button, hit the subscribe button because you know we're going to be here next week and we're going to tell you about the most trending comic in the comic book industry this week and we are chatting Thor 4 59 after set leaks revealed the first images of Thor Love and Thunder, the movie we've been long awaiting for. We know we teamed up with the Guardians of the Galaxy. We knew we were going to get some great Star-Lord Thor scenes, and we see in this very picture updated versions of our heroes causing a $25 average sale to happen and a $100 CGC 9.8 to sell. So this issue is where we see Eric Masterson become Thunderstrike. Well, Thunderstrike wears a vest, and in these photos, we end up seeing Chris Hemsworth Thor wearing a vest, which is very similar to Thunderstrike's vest. This book I'm not too sure about, Russ. So we have a vest clearly in shot, possible character redesign. He's also wearing boots in this shot that are similar to like the Kirby classic costume. He's got the blue jeans on. So maybe this is just a bunch of fan service. But are we seeing member spec on this book because of the vest solely? Or are they thinking that Eric Masterson may be incorporated into the MCU in some capacity, which I don't see happening. 
So, Tom, people are no strangers to specking on Thor's appearance. Do you remember when Machine Man 19, the first appearance of Fat Thor, showed up? Or even when people started talking about Guardians of the Galaxy number 41, when we had Bro Thor showing up? I mean, this is not at all like, you know, Thor 339, the actual first appearance of Stormbreaker. Now, the names of some of these minor keys that Russ just mentioned are actually ones that were bestowed by the community. You're not going to find this in like an Overstreet price guide or something like that. No, you go on eBay and you're going to see in the title description, those are the nicknames given on these comics because the collectors made it so. Now, a 3,000% increase in copies sold in seven days after this leak was revealed. And I don't know, maybe it's just the vest. Maybe it's wishful thinking about Eric Masterson. I'm a bit more excited about Star-Lord's beard. I mean, it's looking pretty good, you know? He's got a new outfit on. I think it looks sleek. But that is Thor... Holding Stormbreaker there, and you mentioned it, Russ, Stormbreaker in this picture is the thing that just shouts out at me the most. We know that we have Jane Foster who's going to be wielding Mjolnir this year. Well, what's going on with Stormbreaker? And is Stormbreaker a sign of maybe another character coming? Because I don't think of Eric Masterson. I'm thinking of Beta Ray Bill. Tom, they are just going to have to stay tuned and watch every week until we figure out what's going on. Big shout out to that Mephisto pin up in the back of this comic book. I appreciate you, comic fam. Thanks for being here every single week. Hit the subscribe button because you know we're going to be here next week. And then as always, geek responsibly. Enough said. Comic fam, let me know in the comment section below, what was your favorite book on this list? Do you own any? It'll enter you to win this copy of Eternals number one by Lucio Badillo. Have a great week.